on guys, how's it going? Yuri here, welcome, welcome. Uh, sorry for the delay, I was gonna start at uh, 7.30 and then my app apparently signed me in on Twitter which set up a whole new account for me because I've actually been logging in with my phone number. So anyways, I apologize for the delay, but here we are. So we're talking about three natural remedies that simply work. The reason I'm sharing this with you right now is uh, welcome from Chicago, let me know where you guys are at. I think we've got the Wi-Fi connection settled and kind of figured out this time. I'm in the studio today. Uh, so if there's a little bit of an echo, that's why. It's, it's a little pretty echoing, echoey in here. Anyways, thank you for the hearts, guys. Keep them coming all episode long. You might as well just keep your finger on the screen. Keep it tapping. I appreciate it. It's awesome. Okay, so let's, let's jump right in. Hope you're having an amazing day. Back to work, back to life, back to school pretty much this week. And this is the time if you've got kids where a lot of people start getting sick because the kids come home with all sorts of like weird bugs and stuff. So you wanna stay healthy, I wanna stay healthy because feeling sick and under the weather sucks. I just took a little nap today because I was feeling a little bit, you know, achy and kind of, you know, the cold feeling. So I'm, gonna, I'm looking over here because I've got three cool things I'm gonna share with you, okay? Okay, so here we go. So three natural remedies and by all means, once I finish sharing these, I'd love to know what you use as well. So number one is a good old oregano oil. Okay, so oregano oil is an amazing antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, anti-everything pretty much. Very powerful immune booster. And the way to take it is like this, okay? So here's, here's the, uh, the masochist way, I, I guess if, I think that's the word, masochist, people who inflict pain upon themselves or like doing that. So what you would do is, I'm just, I've emptied the dropper out here is you would fill this up with a couple you know droplets boom under the tongue that's if you're insane literally the easier the easier way to do it is to put it into a veggie cap a, a blank capsule fill it up and then swallow the capsule okay that way you're gonna get like a whole dropper full of oregano oil and really really good stuff now the thing you want to look out for really important i'm going to see if i can find this on the on the label here. Uh, usually most oregano oils will give you a breakdown of oil to water. Where do you get blank capsules? Any health food store will sell them. Just ask for blank veggie caps and you'll be able to find them there. Okay, so the one thing you wanna look for is, okay, so see down here where it says 25%, if you can see that, 25% oregano oil and 75% olive oil. That's basically a three to one ratio of oil or olive oil, like a base to the oregano oil. So a three to one is pretty intense. A one to one is obviously very intense. And no, I would not mix it in your smoothie. It's very intense, okay? This is not like oregano spice you throw in your pasta. This is like atomic, atomic level. So be sure to look for the, like the, the proportion, oregano oil to olive oil. And that's gonna be really, not that one is better or worse. Obviously it's more potent if you have more oregano to olive oil. And yeah, so just follow the dosage on the, on the bottle and that's, there we go. Yes, you know, maybe I'll do, I don't know if I'm brave enough to do this right now. Should, do you guys want me to take a drop of this right now? Let's see like how uncomfortable it can make me and the, the weird face. You put it in your juice for your son. Oh my goodness, that is, uh, <laughs> that is intense. Okay, well, uh, well, eh, okay, we've got some yeses and nos whether I should do this or not. Okay, here's the thing. If you guys invite your friends over and tell them, hey, this guy Yuri's about to do something ridiculous with oregano oil, and if we can get, I don't know, I think we're at 22 followers right now watching this, so if we can get up to 30 within the next few minutes, just go on Twitter or share with your peeps, get them to come and watch this, then I will take a drop of this right into the mouth. And we'll see what kind of ridiculous nonsense this will, this will create. Okay, so oregano oil is, um, is the first natural remedy. The second one, and what I actually really, really like, is vitamin C. Vitamin C is so important because it's water soluble, which means that when you pee, you lose a lot of it. So it's not stored in the body but it's very, very important because it's one of the most important antioxidants for your body for helping you stay well and kind of 
you know, dealing with uh, even with athletics and, and working out, it can help prevent. Sorry, I shouldn't say prevent. It can help reduce muscle soreness and all the inflammation that can come about after working out and strenuous activity. So when here's an, here's actually a very interesting thing about uh, vitamin C. It's not so much about taking it when you're sick. It's about doing so consistently. That has been shown in the studies to really make a profound difference. And what I love to do is, well, thank you so much, Beth Lizzie124. I really, uh, I really appreciate the nice comments, saying that I'm one of her favorite periscopes. Okay, so this is what I use. Um, one of the things that I use. So this is NRC. This is actually really, really good vitamin C. Yeah, it's a thousand milligrams, as you can see. You just put it into water, and it tastes really good. I mean, our kids love this, and um, just looking at, I mean, it's ascorbic acid, so it's a form of ascorbic acid, so it's not like whole food based vitamin C, but it's still really good. So I usually take this, if I have it in stock in my, in my pantry, I'll usually do one of these a day. And when I'm sick or feeling a little bit under the weather, I'll do a couple more. So maybe three, four, five. The thing with vitamin C, is uh, do they have a favorite flavor? I don't know. I mean, I have this one. There's a lime. There's like a, a fruit punch one, I think, as well. And the good thing about this is that it's it tastes good. It's very easy to take. And um, where was I going with this? Yeah, vitamin C. It's one of those things that your body does not store. So if you take this in the morning, and then you go to the bathroom within, let's say, two, three, four hours afterwards, a lot of that will have passed through your body. Your body's obviously going to use a bunch of it but it's going to go through and you're going to want to time kind of release this stuff throughout the day. So have one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night, for instance, you can get them at any health food store. You can actually get them at most grocery stores nowadays. So a great company, love their stuff. I have no affiliation with them at all, but I just use it. So I figured, Hey, I'll, I'll let you guys know as well. Another cool thing about vitamin C is that's actually one of the most important vitamins or, or micronutrients for the health of your skin. The collagen in your skin, a lot of that is built up of not only protein, but vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important for the development and maintenance of healthy collagen, which gives your skin that elasticity. So vitamin C, put that out of the way. Okay, now speaking of vitamin C, another one of my favorite natural remedies is, uh, this is a little bit more biased obviously, is my own greens powder. And the reason I mention this is because uh, where are we here? Okay, if you can see the label there, it says vitamin C 740% of your daily recommended intake for vitamin C. So vitamin C you cannot really overdose on. It's not like the fat soluble vitamins like vitamins A, D, E, and K. I know we ran out, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this stuff goes like hotcakes. So we're trying, to, we're trying to get into a situation where we can keep it in stock, but it just, it goes, uh, so quickly so we'll have some stock left so we'll have them back in stock probably towards the end of september so i apologize for that but i mean they're just so good they go so quickly so 740 percent of your, of your daily vitamin c that's in one tablespoon and actually this is almost at the end so i'm going to see if you can see in inside the tin so that's smells so good um i've got uh, a couple more of these tins in my pantry, thank goodness. So anyways, this uh, normally you can get at the website is alldayenergydiet.com forward slash greens. We're currently out of stock, but you can you know, keep it on file and, and check in when we do have stock. Um, but the cool thing is it's 740% of your daily vitamin C. Really powerful. Now, the reason that greens in general, whether it's this or green juice or green smoothies or any other greens powder, and I'll tell you why this is the best greens powder on the planet in a second, um, is that the body is not so much about, okay, it's not so much about the super bugs, the super bugs, like the latest bug that's going to make us sick. It's about the fact that your internal physiology is not up to snuff to be able to deal with what's going on. And the germ theory, which was popularized, obviously, and invented by Louis Pasteur, was kind of refuted by himself on his deathbed where he said the germ is nothing, the environment is everything. What he meant by that is that right now, as I'm speaking, I am covered in tens of trillions of microorganisms. There are 10 times more bacteria in and outside of us than we have human cells. 
So we are essentially one tenth human, ten parts bacteria, if you want to think of it that way. It's crazy. So the microbiome is really important. So we have, you know, E. coli and all sorts of dangerous bacteria and microorganisms around us and inside of us at all times. The difference, though, in a lot of cases, and I'm not saying that infectious disease doesn't come into place, right? Because, I mean, if you contract malaria, it doesn't really matter. Oops. It doesn't really matter how healthy you are. You'll probably have malaria at some point, right? So the whole idea here is that you want to set yourself up to you want to set up your internal physiology so that those bugs do not activate. And that's essentially what happens is that in an unhealthy environment, those bugs turn from dormant to, oh, this is the ideal scenario for me to just become a problem. Let me give you a really simple analogy of this is when you open your fridge, so let's say you unplug your fridge, right? And you come back maybe two weeks later after a vacation and you open your freezer, what do you see? Right? You most likely see kind of this weird buildup of stuff, and it's almost like a mold buildup. And it would be really weird to say that while you were on vacation, these bacteria opened up your fridge and snuck into the freezer while you were gone. The reality is that they were always there. It's just that the environment inside the freezer was so cold that they couldn't do anything. However, when it was unplugged, it became warmer inside, now the environment was such that they could become problematic. And that's essentially what happens inside the body. So it's not so much about taking like just oregano oil and killing something off. It's about getting your body into a state where its internal workings are generally ideal for health. So that you're not really having to deal with issues all the time from the latest super bug while everyone else is getting sick. So one of the best ways to do that is by getting lots of alkalinity into your body. Your body as a health vessel is energized when it is mostly alkaline. The reason for that is because when you are mostly alkaline, and alkaline basically means eating a lot more greens and plant foods because they give off more of an alkaline residue, essentially more alkaline minerals like calcium, potassium, magnesium, than they do protein and phosphorus, which are more acidic. So foods like animal products, cheese, grains, sugar, processed foods, those are the most acidic foods. Obviously your diet is you know, pretty popular with those. So that's why most people are acidic and that's why most people are not as healthy as they want to be. So getting more plant-based foods in, getting more greens in is really, really important. Obviously you can't juice all the time, you can't make smoothies all the time, right? If you can, that's terrific. Um, but sometimes you run out of produce, sometimes you're just a little bit too lazy to make something, right? Believe me, I'm the same way. So. That's why we developed this, and this is essentially one tablespoon in water, and it just helps to give you a bit of a, of a nutritional safety net. So, yeah. Uh, Beth Lizzie, can you still offer a discount on your greens when they come in back in stock? Uh, there's another question in there. Dan, that was too fast. Um, I don't know. Usually, we very rarely discount this stuff because we have a very high cost on this because we want to make sure that this is the best quality greens powder on the planet and it tastes the best it's the best quality we use a grass juice powder which means that the grass is cut freeze dried and juiced so you're not getting the whole leaf and all the fiber and the grittiness that you get in a lot of other greens powders this is smooth it's velvety it tastes amazing and let me read you the ingredients organic goji berry powder Organic maca, organic barley grass juice powder, organic alfalfa grass juice powder, organic chlorella powder, organic spirulina powder, organic cinnamon powder, organic vanilla powder. 100% certified USDA organic, gluten-free certified, 100% raw, and it tastes absolutely amazing. So we will never compromise on the quality of this, and that's why we very rarely discount uh, this particular green superfood. It's amazing, okay? So this will last you for about a month if you're taking one to two tablespoons a day. Uh, well, between Amy and I and the kids, this is like, we do five to six tablespoons, so that's why we usually have more, more in our pantry. And I'm the one who developed it, so, you know, I send myself a couple extra tins. So, uh, yeah, so these are kind of my three secret weapons, and even when I'm not sick, I'm taking this. Now, let me go back to the oregano oil for a second. The one important thing to remember with oregano oil um, is that this is something you want to taper off of. So two weeks on, 
two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off, okay? Because it's not something you wanna be taking every single day for the rest of your life. Certain things you can, like the greens, like vitamin C, but there are certain immune boosters that you wanna just kinda of taper off and taper on, and oregano oil will be one of them. So I'm just gonna put that down. Um, there's, sorry, there's a question that, again, sort of popped up and just disappeared. Something along the lines of, are these green powders a replacement or as nutrient dense as other foods? If you can pop that up again, that'd be awesome. But if that is the question, let me answer that. Uh, it, it's, it can be very deceiving when you see greens products saying one tablespoon gives you the same amount of nutrients as 10 servings of vegetables. Let's just think about that for a second because that's a very, very bold claim. And what I would do and what I've done, and there's actually, I've written an article about this um, that I can't remember the URL for, but if you're on my mailing list, if you're on my email list, which you can join at urielcame.com, eventually we'll send out another email about it because it's really important. A lot of food companies, um, you know, you, you kind of have a bit of faith that they'll do the best thing for you, but a lot of times they're really stretching the truth. And when it comes to greens powders, what I've noticed is that if you look at the nutrition facts and you're like, okay, let's, let's just say that one tablespoon was equivalent to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables. Well, let's just assume 10 servings of fruits and vegetables gave you 30 to 35 grams of fiber, right? Let's just make that assumption because that's relatively where it's going to be. Well, the fiber in this is one gram. And that's because we don't use the fiber. Most of it is kind of extracted in the juicing process. So that's one thing that you're not gonna be getting from a juice blend, unless you're using some you know, lower quality grass, whole grass powder, which includes the gritty fiber, which is fine in a whole food you know, form, but in the greens that you're gonna to add to water, not the best. So that's one thing. The other thing is that if you look at the micronutrient breakdown of 10 servings of fruits and vegetables, I mean, you're going to see some pretty high numbers on the nutrients, the nutrient facts, right? So in most cases, you're not going to see that. Um, and if you do, then you have to consider like, you know, a lot of a lot of these different greens powders will incorporate like 50 plus ingredients. We have eight. And the reason is that, you know, you can have 50 ingredients in this. And I'm not just talking about greens. I'm talking about like any supplement, any kind of shake or whatever. You could have 50 ingredients, but the reality is that you might have like 80% of those ingredients of the quantity of them being in the first one or two, and then trace, trace amounts of those other ones, like, you know, organic broccoli or alfalfa, and those, you know, those are the things that are important. So anyways, maybe what I'll do is I'll save a, a, a nutrition label reading understanding scope for, uh, for a future episode, but um, yeah, so, I would not say it's a replacement. It never is a replacement. That's why these are called generally supplements, right? Supplements or complements, as I like to think of them sometimes, they are gonna complement a whole foods diet. But again, they're, they're, it's just, it's something you can do that's easy. It's 30 seconds. It's going to give you that extra edge when you're pressed for time, when you're on the run, when you don't wanna have a coffee, when you wanna have something that's gonna pick you up mid-afternoon, when you might be you know, dozing off of the desk, this is the kind of stuff you want to turn to. So there we go. So those are my three natural remedies. Can you take it with lemon? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You can take it with lemon. Uh, the thing is that we actually formulated this with organic, uh, so the cinnamon and vanilla, the flavor is incredible. It's so good. One of my favorite smoothies with this greens powder is one banana, one tablespoon of this, coconut water and ice and, wa and a bit of water. Oh my goodness. It is amazing so so good so there it is uh, so three natural remedies that work oregano oil vitamin c and obviously our greens powder for the alkalinity that's giving you as well as the vitamin c and yeah there we go what is your favorite natural remedy what do you, you use when you are feeling a little bit down not your greatest can you take it by the spoonful uh, i don't know you could i mean it might, it might get a bit chalky in your mouth so I would definitely recommend with water or in a smoothie, a green smoothie preferably, but we give you a ton of recipes to enjoy with that. So B vitamins, great, awesome. Mushrooms, I'm assuming the good kind, right? Not the, the shroom shrooms. Lemon juice, awesome. 
Do any of you guys use uh, colloidal silver? Yeah, yeah, colloidal silver is another one. I mean, I'm just showing, I'm throwing, I'm showing three of them here, but I'd use colloidal silver, uh, colloidal silver, coconut oil, um, hydrogen peroxide sometimes, very, very diluted. What else? Um, echinacea, I was actually supposed to be drinking five cups of echinacea tea today. I didn't quite hit that quota, so I'm gonna do that tonight. Um, licorice root, licorice root is very good for uh, stomach health. If you have any ulcer issues or digestive stuff, licorice root is amazing for that. Ginger, awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. I mean, great suggestions, guys. It's good to hear that you guys are on the ball. This is good, this is good. Excellent. Well, th again, thank you for the hearts. Keep them coming. This is this is tremendous. It's like I'm in a I'm in a theme park, amusement park with all these like da -da 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 -da. these hearts just flying all over like balloons. Awesome. What else can I answer for you? Do you have a question that I can ask for you as it pertains to health, nutrition, fitness? And I will be due. Um, I'm due for some good workout videos. So now that the kids are back to school, I'll probably do more of that stuff. Slippery elm for the stomach. Yup. It's love tea steam. All right, it's good, good, excellent. You guys enjoying the hot weather? It's been like amazingly hot here, like ridiculously hot. And today I was wearing jeans and a sweater. Like, am I crazy? I don't even know. I went outside at one point and I was like, oh, I'm gonna melt. So pink rabbit, rob, robot tips, or pink robot lips. <laughs> yes, you've got a question. What's up? How can I be of service? It's over 100 in Orange County. I know, it's amazing, like crazy. So we'll just have an awkward moment of silence here as I await the question. So I was doing the same thing every day and then stopped doing that, did water fasting, cool. And... So is there a conclusion to that question? Or uh, And then only ate when I was really hungry and didn't eat when I wasn't, okay? So the story continues, we're almost there. <clears throat> no worries, take your time. <clears throat> so eating the same thing every day to water fasting, then transitioning to only eating when she was hungry. And I'm sure there's a conclusion to this question. So did you guys read my post today on how to do a one day fast? It's on the blog, yourielcame.com. Check it out, it's awesome. Then I started having cravings. Okay, so how long was the water fast for? Because my wife, Amy, actually, when we first started dating, she did a 30 day water fast. She went down to Panama, did 30 days with no food, just water. She came back, she looked amazing. Oh, so you just did a day, one day. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, okay, let's, let's, let's put things into perspective here. So you did a day of fasting, which is kind of what I recommend you do, and you felt that you had more cravings afterwards. Now, that's completely normal because, <coughs> let's be honest, if you're, if you're addicted to caffeine or sugar or bread or carbs, whatever the food is, and if you've been eating that same food every single day and then you don't have it for one day, you have to give your body some time to work through that. So one day you're definitely gonna feel like, oh my God, I need to get my fix. But if you were to do, not that I'm suggesting you do this, a 30 day water fast, which I would, again, I'm not recommending you do that. Um, but that's gonna really gonna clear your body out of, of really most issues, uh, emotional, you know, physiological. And, you know, one day is, is, is tremendous in terms of the ability to do that. But remember, if, if you're drinking, for instance, I'm just use coffee as an example. If you drink coffee every single day and then you don't drink coffee one day, you know, um, it's not gonna be good. So you just think, so when you don't eat regularly, it makes you wanna eat things that you never eat. Another thing you may wanna consider here is that there could be some blood, blood sugar issues going on. Whereas if you don't eat, your blood sugar drops too low and then you start craving a lot of like sugar and carbs and so forth, which can make it a bit more challenging. So. I would say, you know, have you had your blood sugar checked out? And if everything's cool, then maybe under try to use this opportunity. Yeah, so you're probably, you know, sugar and gluten. So I, I would use that opportunity to really assess like what's going on. Like, what are you really hungry for? 
Is the fasting making you anxious, uncomfortable, and you're looking for a, a feeling of calmness and serenity that a lot of times sugar and carbs can often fill? And even if you don't eat them very often, I mean, sometimes we can fall back into some of those addictions. But the reason, I, one of the reasons I love fasting, again, a one-day fast, 18 to 24 hours, is that it gives you the opportunity to uh, kind of remove yourself from, from always having to eat and really of trying to figure out like what, why am I eating now? Why am I hungry or am I just conditioned to do this because I'm doing a specific activity like sitting on the couch or am I stressed out? And yeah, so again, it's, it's tough for me to say exactly why you might have the cravings, but I would say, you know, like if you can continually, if you do like a one day water fast once a week and you're eating a clean diet in conjunction with that on the other days, um, then my hope would be that it sub, kind of subsides over time. So hopefully, again, I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for. So if I don't eat, I don't feel good. I have no energy for workouts. Okay, yeah, l let, me, let me mention this. If, you don't, if you're not, if you're fasting, that's a day where you definitely don't want to be working out. You can do some type of light activity, but this is, I mean, okay, so let's say you're not eating, you do an intense workout, your blood sugar crashes now because you've had to use that blood sugar to fuel your workouts, and now your body is craving sugar, right? To reestablish normal blood sugar, to fuel your muscles and to recover. And that's why I definitely would not recommend a heavy workout on a fasting day. In my all-day fat burning diet, the one, day, uh, the one day fast is a component of the five day food cycling formula that I use. And it's also used in conjunction with a very strategic and very short term type of exercise. And I'm talking about five minutes of exercise. And what you're doing there is you're allowing your body to kind of rev up, right? So you increase the, the output of adrenaline, which actually stimulates fat breakdown. And then you just kind of coast and ride throughout the day to do some basically, like if you're just sitting around or going for a walk, your body is primed to use more fat as your, pri uh, as your primary fuel source. But you have to be careful that you don't overdo it on a fasting day because if you deplete your muscle glycogen, if you deplete your blood sugar and you have nothing coming in afterwards, you're gonna feel really crummy. And that's probably why you're gonna start you know, craving carbs and sugars and stuff. So what about the next day? If I fast one day, then don't work out, do I eat breakfast? Um, yeah, I mean, again, listen to your body. Listen to what works best for you. Yeah, a hypoglycemia definitely sounds, you know, kind of bang on. I also change the protein early, carbs at night to sleep, like you suggested. Cool. And remember, it's not about just carbs at night and just protein in the morning. It's about just blending things a little bit more intelligently. So in the morning, adding more protein into your breakfast. So let's just say you are having oatmeal, which is, for the lack of a better term, a full-on carbohydrate breakfast. Add in 20 to 25 grams of protein. <clears throat> almond butter, <clears throat> excuse me, almond butter, nuts, some protein powder blended in, right, to get that protein up so that you stay satiated and it kind of helps to regulate your hormones a bit more. Um, <clears throat> and later, again, later in the day, have a couple more starchy carbs if you want with your dinner. So maybe you're having some fish and salad. Maybe you add in some sweet potato if you want. You don't have to, right? But again, you want to, every day is a journey, right? You're always learning and exploring about what works best for you. So that's the key. Cool. All right, so um, I hope that's helped you out. Hope that served you well. And uh, again, it's I do my best to answer these questions over like you know Periscope or, or YouTube. Uh, yes, I'm feeling much better. Well, thank you for the question. Am I feeling better after heat exhaustion? I think so, but it may have been a blend of heat exhaustion and kind of coming down with something. So I am feeling better. So yeah, um, thank you for asking. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So with that said, I um, hope you guys have found this enjoyable. What we're actually going to be doing on my YouTube channel is we're going to be taking all these Periscope sessions uh, because they're saved to my phone and we're going to be uploading them into YouTube. Uh, Venus or, or Serena tonight? Oh, easily Serena. I mean, no, no contest. What daily vitamin do you recommend for children? Um, there's a good one by... It's a chewable multivitamin by, I think it's Genestra, I think. 
I can't remember what the one we use. It might be from Genestra. That's kind of, I think there's one, it's like a kid's chewable one. It's not the Flintstones. It's a really good brand. I think it's Genestra. That's the one we use for our kids. Uh, so what we're going to do with these videos is, you know, there's a lot of great content in here, a lot of good advice. So instead of just having them disappear into the ethers, we've put together this really cool template for our YouTube videos for Periscope specifically, and we'll have a playlist on my YouTube page. So my YouTube page, my YouTube channel is at Yelkame one I think. Don't even ask me why. I mean, okay, this doesn't make sense, right? My Instagram is Uriel Kame, at Uriel Kame. Facebook is at Uriel Kame one Periscope is at Yelkame. YouTube is at Yelkame one I mean, could it be more confusing? If I knew what I was doing right from the start, everything would have just been Uriel Kame. It would have been a lot easier, but it's not that way. So anyways, we'll have a playlist on my channel on YouTube at Yelkame one when you're on YouTube. And we'll have a playlist just for Periscope. So all the Periscopes I do on a daily basis, we're gonna put them up in there and you guys will get to enjoy this stuff forever. I, it's, you know, I love YouTube, I love doing video, as you know, and it's just such a great way to leverage what's in my brain to help you guys out as much as possible. And you guys are asking some amazing questions, and if you're asking these questions, guess what? Millions of other people are probably wondering the same thing somewhere in the world. So it would be a very big disservice of me to let this just go to waste, right? So I'm sure you'd agree. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Val. Thank you for all those, uh, for joining me, I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for everyone as well for taking the time to join me and for all the hearts. We've had a ton of hearts. Like This has been a great episode. Um, let's just keep them going. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, so I'm going to finish off now. I actually have to go read the last couple chapters of the uh, the first pass manuscript from the All Day Fat Burning Diet, which I showed you guys a couple days ago. Maybe I'll do another chapter. I'll read you guys some stuff tomorrow. And uh, I actually have to submit some whatever changes and edits back to Rodale, our publisher, tomorrow. So I need to make sure I finish that reading tonight. So I gotta go do that now and watch some US Open tennis. I mean, last night, I don't know if you guys saw the game, uh, Kevin Anderson against Murray. Oh my goodness, like what tennis, like unbelievable quality tennis. And a couple nights before, Nadal and Fonini, amazing stuff. So I'm sitting up a little bit later than I usually do, but I mean, this is once a year. It's a lot of fun, so. If you, if you love tennis, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you're like, well, whatever. Okay, there we go, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you, to you tomorrow. Thank you once again for all the love and for joining me. Hope this has served you well, and I'll talk to you then.